Hello again. I'm sure that most viewers are aware that there is pressure on commercial companies, government departments, the police and the armed forces to demonstrate their diversity. In practice, this means showing that they have women and black people in senior positions and preferably to combine the two so that black women become the outward and visible sign of the organization's values and commitment to inclusion. Harvard University played this game last summer when they appointed a black woman as president. It hasn't ended well because, of course, when you give somebody a prestigious job based only on their sex and skin colour, this is apt to show up at some point. So it has proved with Claudine Gay, who not only thought that it was okay for people to call for the genocide of the Jewish people, but had also been a little less than scrupulous with her academic work, copying whole chunks of other people's writing and then sticking them in her own productions. More than 50 examples of this practice have now come to light, and Gay has of course resigned making her the shortest-serving Harvard president in history. In Britain, many of us remember the decision to give the top job in London's police force to a woman. It was generally agreed not only in, amongst police officers but also with the general public that Cressida Dick was not perhaps the best person to choose for the position of Commissioner of Police for the Metropolis. The Americans have of course been at this game for far longer than we have in this country and I thought that it might be interesting to look at what happened 30 years ago when this awful trend was still in its infancy. On the 25th of October 1994 a woman called Cara Spiels Holtgreen was killed as she attempted to land a fighter plane onto an American aircraft carrier on a routine training mission off the coast of San Diego. Holt Green had achieved fame briefly for becoming the first woman fighter pilot in the American Armed Forces. Her accomplishment was the subject of controversy though after her death for it was alleged that there was political pressure on both the Air Force and Navy to produce a female pilot in order to demonstrate that there was no sexism in the armed forces. Rumours, which were later confirmed, suggested that men were overlooked for qualification so that the Navy could produce a female fighter pilot. Holt Green had failed her first test, and there were those who said that she was not of sufficiently high calibre to be a pilot landing aircraft on the decks of an aircraft carrier. There was also a suspicion that the Navy had rushed the process of allowing Holt Green to qualify because they were determined to beat the Air Force in having a female fighter pilot first. How true all the stories about Cara Spill's Holt Green are is still a matter of debate but there can be little doubt that there was a fixed desire to appoint a woman as fighter pilot on ideological grounds, purely in the interest of diversity and inclusion. Of course, for many years, women were actively excluded from a lot of roles, which meant that men were routinely given jobs on the grounds of their sex, which was plainly wrong. However, the current arrangement is to reverse this process by adopting exactly the same kind of irrational desire to give people positions simply because of their sex. You will notice, of course, that this is only directed against traditionally male occupations, with the intention of increasing the number of women in a particular field. There are literally no men at all working in 99% of nurseries, both in Britain and the United States. But you're not going to be seeing a drive to redress this inequality by trying to recruit more men to work in nurseries. This kind of social engineering is reserved for places like the army, which are traditionally male bastions. 
It's considered by some to be shocking that so few women are serving in, say, infantry regiments or special forces. To this end, the physical fitness tests are made easier, because otherwise there is little chance that women would be able to pass them. Things like carrying half a hundredweight in equipment for miles is something which men, for obvious physical reasons, can usually do better than women. This has had the effect of making parts of the armed forces in both Britain and the United States less fit and capable of fighting than used to be the case. The reason for this is that because they wanted to conceal what was happening and avoid accusations that women were being treated differently, the requirements for physical fitness for all entrants is sometimes reduced, which means that both men and women are allowed into certain units who are feebler and less capable of prolonged exertion than used to be the case. This is much the same as happened in the British police when a drive was mounted to increase the number of female officers, the aim being that they would eventually make up half of all police officers. This was made easier because in earlier efforts to increase their diversity, in this case the number of police officers of Indian and Pakistani heritage, height requirements for the police had been abolished. At one time, Police officers in Britain had to be at least 5 foot 10 in height and in some forces 6 foot tall. Because men from South Asia, Bangladesh, Pakistan and so on tended to be shorter than the average British person, this was identified as being a form of indirect racism and so height requirements were first reduced and then dropped altogether. This was good news for women because it means that very short women are now able to join the police and serve on the streets. The ultimate result of such folly may be seen in the thumbnail to this video, which shows Susan Day of the Wiltshire Police, who is just 4 feet 10 inches in height. It is to be doubted that such a diminutive person will be treated with as much respect on a rough Saturday night as the taller man standing next to her. All attempts to rig things so as to give jobs to women or black people purely because of their skin colour or sex are undesirable. At best it means a return to the bad old days of racial and sexual discrimination, that is to say people being barred from certain positions because of their skin colour or because of their gender. So it is now that in the RAF, white men were being discriminated against in order to push forward the number of ethnic minority um, applicants accepted for flight training. At worst, this sort of thing, thing means armed forces, universities and police officers, which are unlikely to be up to scratch because requirements have been dropped so that women will be more able to get in. It's not a good idea, generally.